Hi folks, today we're gonna talk about turning a single board computer into a laptop. If you are regularly watching my videos, you probably know that in the beginning of this year, I predicted that Raspberry Pi might have built a laptop in 2025 based on Raspberry Pi 500 and a monitor. Instead, we've recently got Raspberry Pi 500 Plus with an illuminated keyboard. However, the New Year's time is coming and Raspberry Pi might be keen to introduce a new computer model. A laptop would have opened a whole range of new uses for Raspberry Pi 5 architecture. There are a number of experimental laptops built on Raspberry Pis. However, a very practical ultra-thin laptop requires a completely different approach. I've decided not to theorize, but to rather find a competitive design that already works. Musebook is made by Spacemate and it is a full-blown laptop. It combines a single board computer architecture with a monitor, keyboard and a touchpad. There is also an expansion board, which is a unique feature amongst laptops and a must-have on a Raspberry Pi like single board computer. Let me show you how easy it is to use general purpose input outputs on Musebook. First, you have to install Python libraries and then it's all very simple. You go to developers web page, you search for GPIO documentation and then uh, you have a very simple sample if you just want to turn on and off one control bit. I've used a voltimeter to see whether the output voltage is alternating between 0 and 3.3 volts. The only thing that I don't like is the maximum current that is available because if I connect the larger LED the voltage drops to 1.7 volt. This indicates that you probably need to insert an amplifier chip. An important feature of a laptop is also a lithium battery, which provides at least a few hours in dependency from the electric rate and prevents a loss of data and an accidental restart during and after a power outage. A fast processor with an advanced graphics core and an SSD drive are also a must for every modern laptop. Musebook is based on RISC-VK1 system on chip, which not only provides a powerful 1K graphics, but it also introduces 2 tera operations per second AI capability. In the previous videos, we have already mentioned two Orange Pies designs based on K1 system on chip. 8 core K1 system on chip with a graphics core represents a powerful alternative to X64 and RM64 architectures. You can plug almost any USB device into Musebook and it's gonna work like a USB camera, a mouse, a USB hub, a data key, a number of USB sound cards, and they all gonna work within volume control. And you'll be able to control each of them separately. You can also plug in your smartphone, not only to copy data, but also to use it as an RNDIS device to provide an internet connection. Or alternatively, you can plug in a USB to Ethernet dongle, or a USB to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dongle, Although Musebook already has an internal Wi Fi and Bluetooth module. This is in contrast with many other K1 system on chip designs which may lack hardware compatibility. If we want to do a comparison between Musebook and Raspberry Pi, probably the most honest one would be to compare Raspberry Pi 500 with 8GB of RAM and an SSD drive. But Raspberry Pi 500 is not designed to have an SSD drive attached except through a USB port. And this would not be a fair comparison. So I've rather decided to go for a Raspberry Pi 500 Plus because it does have an inbuilt SSD drive. It's 256 gigabytes and though it has twice the amount of RAM, it's 16 gigabytes instead of eight, but it's still very comparable regarding the performance. Its graphics core supports 4K graphics, but this doesn't mean that it's much faster than K1's graphics core, which only supports 1K graphics. Musebook has an inbuilt 1K monitor, so a 4K graphics would have only been available on an external 2K or 4K monitor. I wanted to know what it takes to make Raspberry Pi 500 Plus work without a power grid. So I bought myself a 10 ampere hour power bank, which is capable of 
the maximum current of 4.5 ampere at 5 volts. This is right on the margin to make Raspberry Pi 500 with a similar configuration to Moosebook work without restarting when running Raspberry Pi OS Trixie, Windows 11 or Ring 16 operating systems. Besides Raspberry Pi 500 and Raspberry Pi monitor, my configuration included Raspberry Pi mouse, a small USB web camera and a simple USB sound card that needs no device drivers. I've performed K-Disk Mark test on Musebook and Raspberry Pi 500 Plus to compare SSD drive performances when running on battery. Surprisingly, both computers indicated about 800 to 900 megabytes per second at read and about 400 megabytes per second at write, which is about the maximum speed of a single lane generation 3 PCIe bus. So, if you want to do a lot of field work when you have to often move your computer and connect it to different control circuits or even experiment on the terrain, maybe controlling a drone or something, then Musebook is really an indispensable tool which uh, you can use and which enables you to program your hardware wherever you want to test it. It's also got a very durable metallic case which also looks nice and gives it a professional look. If you want a desktop, then Musebook may not be the right choice for you, but MusePy is also an option. Go for one of Muse Pies, which are similar to Raspberry Pi in hardware capabilities. Speaking of other SpaceMite solutions, we've already discussed Musebook, but there is also Musebox uh, if you want to have a desktop-like computer. And there is MuseShelf, which is going to enable you to use multi-computer. So, but if you go for a more basic solutions like Raspberry Pi 5, then you have MusePy, which is a very interesting computer. Uh, it's just a single board computer without a case. And uh, this is also very interesting, Muse card, and then you have Muse N1. So uh, different kind of solutions. And if you want to know more about them, then just go to the dock tab. So you can see it here. Uh, and if you click here, uh, you're going to see uh, all kind of different uh, computers together with their respective blueprints. So if you take, for example, Muse book that we've discussed today, uh, you can see that uh, we have hardware reference design and uh, you can also, if you are interested in, if, if you're an engineer and if you like to explore and know everything about it, then you can go here so you can see all the blueprints in detail uh, not like uh, for Raspberry Pi because Raspberry Pi does not want to release their blueprints but here you have everything including the voltages and uh, the pins and everything so the internal workings so very very interesting uh, so you can learn a lot and if you have a question you can also ask an intelligent assistant uh, to answer your question so uh, let's go here. So this is a Muse Pi. You, you also have a design for Muse Pi. You can see what kind of memories are used or being available, what kind of EMMC memories. So you have uh, you have hardware reference design and. Uh, uh, for example, if you go back to Musebook, uh, you can also see that we have uh, a layout. So you, you can see uh, actually the PCB layout. Uh, this is also very interesting because uh, you can uh, actually see the element placement. So if you actually want to do something uh, internally, usually you wouldn't, uh, I, I don't know, stick a wire here. but if you really want to do something special with your computer uh, and uh, if you are very careful of course because you don't want to ruin it uh, you can also connect something directly to the PCB because you have uh, a blueprint but I'm not talking about the warranty and so on but uh, about the possibility of actually what you can do actually you also get the blueprint of the as you can see uh, the PCB itself so it's multi-layer PCB and uh, you can see all of the four layers so you know exactly where each pin goes 
to from one chip to another and so on and uh, if you want to develop your own software you can also have a software development kit so really a lot of stuff uh, to study to work on uh, so if you've liked this video, please press like and subscribe buttons and don't forget about the notification bell. If you really, really like it, then hype it as well. See you in the next video. Bye.